Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this day. We're glad you're here as we worship our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I want to welcome all of our members and friends and guests and hope uh, you are blessed in our worship and that God is glorified. Um, this is, of course, uh, Mother's Day, and we wish all the women of the church, mothers and aunts and sisters and daughters, everybody a blessed Mother's Day. Also, uh, it's Good Shepherd Sunday, Sunday when we recall that Jesus is our Good Shepherd. Um, next Sunday, of course, will be Homecoming Sunday, and hopefully we can have some uh, folks uh, that you invite come, and whether they're former members, friends, or family, we pray that uh, we will have a good attendance for that Sunday and encourage folks to come out. We will have our North Carolina Senate Bishop, Ken Smith, as our guest pastor. He was to be here for homecoming last May, but as you recall, we had a homecoming in July with Pastor Milky and didn't get to do that in May. So he's coming. Uh, next Sunday. And again, you're also invited to bring photos and other items related to Lau's history. Uh, when I say history, it can be your own personal history with Lau's. And we'll try to display those out in the fellowship hall. Um, several folks to keep in our prayers. Um, one is a cousin of Joan, the family, uh, family of Jason Alexander. He uh, was four years old and apparently died of a heart attack. Uh, in Alabama, he was driving a, a big truck. So please keep that family in your prayers. I think they did a more than you, but Jason Alexander, family of Jason Alexander. And also prayers are requested for Kathy Sharp. She's to have a procedure, an outpatient procedure Wednesday at Duke Hospital. Uh, they're trying to figure out why she has a persistent cough cough that keeps uh, coming back on her. So please keep Kathy in your prayers. Also, Lee Huffman, as you probably may be gathered from the emails, he first was told the pills he was taking were going to be good, and then later on the radiologist said that he had misread the results of the scan and that pills are doing some work against the cancer that he has in the larynx. So he is back on those pills, and they're going to continue to monitor his progress. Um, Please continue to keep Lee in your prayers. Um, how's David doing? He's still progressing very slowly. He's okay. coming along. He's coming along. Please keep David in your prayers too as he continues to recover from a partial knee replacement. Uh, Bible study Wednesday at 10 30. We will look at uh, a closer look at the resurrection. Uh, I want to mention the Alamax Corral. Next Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday at 7 30 at First Presbyterian Church, we'll have a concert, Peace for the Soul. And Lynn is a member of that group. She'll be singing, so go out and support them next Tuesday. Birthdays, uh, Bob Hall has one tomorrow. Uh, are there any other announcements? Anything to be brought to our attention? If not, uh, we're going to continue on with our worship. We have a litany of responsive reading for Mother's Day, and I invite you to stand if you're able. Found inside the front cover of your book. Members come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank God for mothers. mothers. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank and God for my mom. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we missed it dearly here on earth. Thank and God for the mothers, mothers of the past. For every woman who is working day and night to raise her children right now. Thank and God for the mothers of today. today. For all the women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank, Thank God, God for soon to be mothers. mothers. For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank and God for the mothers with hearts so big. For those women who have lost a child to death and must carry home. Thank, Thank God, God for the mothers who are so strong. For all the 
women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own but chose instead to mother everyone else. Thank, thank God, God for the mothers and spirits. We thank you, thank Lord, 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 for the length of the influence of our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor you in everything we do. Amen. whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples, who heard that Peter was there, sent two men to him with the request, please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them, and when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter took all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for, for some time with a certain Simon, a town. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 23 responsibly. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. The Lord is my hand and he gives me silence to the waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. The Lord will look down the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, you are on your side. Prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, we read the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. The second reading is 
in Revelations, the seventh chapter. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night within His temple. And the one who was seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John the Pentateuch. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. But you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Before we continue, I would invite you as you leave uh, this morning that our flowers on the table there at St. Cray Entrance in the North Next, please take one or two for yourself if you're a woman. And if you're not a woman or a woman, you can take some for somebody at home who couldn't be with us today. But whatever the case, please uh, do take some flowers as you leave this morning in remembrance and honor of Mother's Day. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our God. Amen. I recall when we were going on vacation when I was young, and my brothers and my sister and I would always, of course, sitting in the back seat, we would always be asking Dad questions. We'd ask, where are we going? What are we passing on the way? And typical questions would include ones like these. What river did we just cross? What town are we passing through? Is there a rest stop nearby? Now mom would sometimes be our intermediary. She would have to relay our questions to dad as he was driving. We were in the back, of course, because again, cars were a bit noisier back then. 
Now, my parents, though, of course, would eventually get fed up with us asking so many questions and just tell us to be quiet, we would get where we were going soon enough. A solution came to all of this as I got a bit older. I was given a map to follow as we traveled, and I could trace the journey for myself, and I could find the answers to all the questions I used to ask Dad while he was there. And I know it was a relief to both of my parents when we didn't have to ask quite so many questions. Now, when I think about this family vacations today, now that I'm older, I can make a connection to those trips with the relationship between the shepherd we have and the sheep, as we find in the 23rd Psalm. You know, Dan was kind of like the shepherd. He was the one who got us where we needed to go. He would find food and, and rest stops along the way. And my sisters and brothers, my sister and brothers and I, we were kind of like the sheep. We were following along, but always wondering exactly where we were headed, what we were passing on the way, how long would it take us to get to our destination, and where would we be stopping on our journey. You know, I think so often we have this image in our heads, and I know I often have had that same image of the shepherd and the flock in the hills somewhere. The shepherd is seated on a rock, maybe some, some young man, maybe even a teenager, whiling away the time with a musical instrument, perhaps, and the sheep are gracefully uh, grazing, peaceful, and so forth, contented. But you know, that image doesn't truly reflect the true nature of the relationship between the shepherd and the sheep. An accurate image is much closer to our family vacation. The shepherd and the flock, they aren't just stationary. They're not just sitting there. They're on a journey together. The shepherd, of course, is in the lead. In the 23rd Psalm, we find that the shepherd has to lead the flock to watering holes, the still water, to grassy pastures, and watch out for those who would harm the sheep. So it's an active thing the shepherd is doing. The shepherd is very active in leading the sheep who are on the move. Now, in the Middle Ages, there was a practice that came to be known as droving. And this became driving in America, and that led to the term cattle drive. As we think about the Old West, when you would move cattle from rangeland to a market, sometimes hundreds of miles away. But in the 1500s in Great Britain, where the term droving developed, most of the droving involved not cattle, but sheep. So like those cattle drives of the Old West, though, many miles could be covered as the shepherds got the livestock from pasture to town. For example, as many as 1,500 to 2,000 head of sheep would travel 20 to 25 days from pastures in Wales to markets in London. These sheep were definitely on the move. So in order that the sheep not lose too much weight on their journey, thereby reducing their value, of course, when they got to the market, the shepherd had to know what he was doing. The shepherds would not fit our image of some absent-minded boy playing the flute on the hillside. No, the, the British shepherds were very much older than that. They had to be at least 30 years old. They were approved and licensed to be shepherds. They had to be of good character. They'd be married. This was because it took a great deal of skill and maturity to make certain the sheep got plenty of food, water, and rest along the way. The shepherd had to be someone who could be trusted by the sheep, someone who was focused on the sheep. Now the 23rd Psalm, I think, describes the Lord as just such a shepherd. The Lord guides us to 
green pastures and still waters. The Lord takes us through safely the dangerous valley and watches over us when we're in the midst of our enemies. Now, like the 23rd Psalm, the 14th chapter of John's Gospel, it's one of the most beloved passages of Scripture. And there, John is telling his disciples, where Jesus is telling his disciples that the time is coming soon when he will have to leave them. They are concerned. But he tells them he's going to go ahead and he's going to prepare a place for them. Now, Thomas is a bit confused. He's troubled. He asks Jesus a question. Lord, we do not know where you are going. It struck me that Thomas is a bit like we were when we were younger asking those questions of Dad. You know, where are we going? He goes on to say, how can we know the way, Lord? How can we know the way? Just like as children, we want to know how we can know the way to where we were going. So Thomas asked the Lord, how can we know the way? Now Jesus does not pull out a map. He doesn't even spend much time explaining. Instead, Jesus points to himself. He says to them, he says to Thomas and the rest, because he knows they all are thinking the same thing. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And if you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. If we read between the lines there, what Jesus is basically saying is, if you know me, you know the Father, and you know where you are going. You know the way to get there. Now, if the sheep want to know where they are going, they they need to look to the good shepherd. Basically, what Jesus is telling his followers, if, if they want to be protected, they need to look to Jesus. And if we see Jesus, truly see him in the way of trusting him, you know, when, when we see him, we don't simply see something that's neutral or negative. We see a positive. We see a man, a person, the Son of God, in whom we can put our trust, the shepherd. And if we can't trust the good shepherd, we will be led to safe places. We will be taken through dark valleys safely. We will be protected even when our enemies surround us. And we will arrive safely at our destination. And that destination, as Jesus told his followers, is the Father's house, the place where he was preparing the rooms for his followers. Now, while Jesus, as I mentioned, he didn't pull out a map, we do have something a bit like a map. We have the words of Holy Scripture. And those words are something like a map. They they tell us about Jesus, the Good Shepherd. They guide us on our journey, tell us where to stop along the way, how to conduct ourselves as we follow the Shepherd, and tell us who to trust and who to avoid. And, of course, the words of Scripture tell us where we're going. For example, we find in the seventh chapter of the Revelation of St. John that our destination is the throne of God. There, after our time of following Jesus, the Good Shepherd, on earth, we can look forward then to being a part of that great multitude that no one could count from all tribes and peoples and languages. We will be with those who have reached the green pastures and the still waters, although in this case the still waters will actually be living water, even better than the still waters. There will be no more hunger or thirst or scorching heat. The water at that destination will not just quench our thirst for the moment, but as you recall Jesus telling the Samaritan woman at the well, it would be the water of life. It would be water for eternity. 
and the one on the throne will wipe away every tear from our eyes, giving us rest and peace. In the fifth chapter of John's Gospel, Jesus assures us that no one can snatch his sheep out of his hand. Whatever the plans of the evil one, whatever the desires of our enemies, Jesus, the shepherd of the sheep, will keep us close as long as we listen to his voice. Just as we saw in Scripture at the Transfiguration and, of course, at his baptism, when the followers of Jesus are told to listen to him. Listen for his voice. Follow him through good times and also bad times. Jesus promises us that, as it says in the 23rd Psalm, he will bring us to the house of the Lord. Not just for a moment, but for eternity. Please stand or give us in one for you. Son, 
Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to participate in Jesus' work of making all things new, including us. Help us to heed Christ's voice. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creator God, feed your people at creation's table, giving them, giving them what they need. Prepare a safe place for those who live in locations where safe water is scarce, food is in short supply, and pollution presents an obstacle to good health and safety. Prosper your creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of love, warm the hearts of all who celebrate and comfort all who mourn this Mother's Day. Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Give strength and patience to those who already are. Help all to heal from both broken family relationships. Open us to receive your nurturing love from those who act as mothers in our lives. And we give thanks, Lord, for all women of the church, women like Tabitha, who serve in so many ways that we may not see and appreciate, but we know bring glory to your name. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate God, seek out the suffering, the grieving, and those longing for a better world. Guide them to those who can provide the care and hope they need. Wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, the needs of many weigh on our hearts. Be with those who mourn their loss and are rebuilding from the damage from tornadoes in various parts of our country of the past week. We also continue to lift up the people of Ukraine as they suffer the violence and, and torment brought on by an unjust war. Lead them through current dangers to a peaceful and free future. Enable the churches of Ukraine to minister to the needs of people in that nation. Bring healing to ones, Lord, we know who are ill, including Lee Huffman, Corey Domino, Tammy Graves, David Greasy, Kathy Sharp, Carson Reinhardt, Ben Abercrombie. We ask for your care for those who have suffered loss and are grieving, including the family of Jason Alexander. Be with others, Lord, we name silently or aloud in need of your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of the church, enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day, guiding us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be received. Please be seated as we receive the offering.
God, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the Holy and Life Giving Trinity, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Remind you that we do have the flowers there in the narthex uh, in the sanctuary entrance. And if you want, please take one. If you're a woman of the church and mother or otherwise, please take one or two. And if you have a mother or somebody at home, please take one for her wife, sister, whatever. That would be great. Now let us go. Uh, hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is uh, risen indeed. Hallelujah. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let me see if I can sneak by here. And you, I think it's. Oh, dear. Look, we got your oh, you got me on there. See it?